Hello and welcome to Banking Law Advisor. Um, we've been talking in recent weeks about uh, various court cases that affect uh, banking law, ex sales and execution, losing your house and what, what you can do about that. Particularly with respect to the question of can a bank sell somebody's house for much less than it's, than it's worth um, without being liable for the difference or um, being able to be interdicted from, from doing so. And there's been a couple of cases that, that reflect on that, not quite on point, um, but about similar things. One of them is Gondwana versus Steckel Developments. Um, what happened there was that Ned Bank, in 1995 this was, the court case was in 2011, but in 1995, Ned Core, as they were at the time, lent money to the, to the borrower to purchase a house. They defaulted. Uh, in due course, um, and the property was declared executable. Executable means so you can get a judgment against somebody that just says you owe that debt, but when you when it's declared executable, it means that the bank can actually sell it at auction or, or whatever way it wishes. Um, the bank didn't execute the writ; they didn't sell it immediately. And the applicant didn't even know that it, what was going on, so they continued to make payments in the bond, but the bank had by this stage got a permission to sell their house in execution. So four years later, the applicant became aware the property was going to be sold in execution at an auction. Uh, at the time, she was in arrears of the amount of only 5,300 rand, and the total outstanding balance was only 24,000 rand left. Uh, she didn't even know about this default judgment the bank had got because the banks often don't tell you even though they've got all their, your details on their system. Um, she contacted the bank and said, look, I'll pay the arrears as soon as possible. She made a bit of a payment and two days later the property was sold in execution. And unfortunately, this isn't an unusual thing. I, in my professional life, I see this all the time. Um, transfer was registered and the applicant remained in the property and the first respondent launched an application for her eviction. Uh, the eviction order was granted and an appeal against it failed. So she replied for a rescission of the 2003 default judgment that the bank had put against her. And that application was pending when the applicant approached the Constitutional Court seeking leave to appeal against the eviction order and direct, direct access on a constitutional issue, which, if decided in her favour, would dispose of the rescission application. The constitutional issue was whether a High Court registrar in the course of ordering a default judgment under Rule 31.5 of the Uniform Rules of Court, may grant an order declaring mortgage property that is a person's home specially executable. So here, we, what, to put that in plain English, what we're saying is, does the administration in the court, the registrar, have the right just to automatically give a, the, the bank a right to sell your property if they've got a, a judgment against you? Or, as the court finally found, does the court have to decide whether your property should be sold in execution or not, taking everything into account, which is what they did uh, do. Now, remember there's, always been, there's already been this case, JAFTA, where the courts decided basically the same issue that it must be judicially supervised. So the bank's trying to say, well, this is different from JAFTA, and this is what they're saying. It contended that the application for leave to appeal, um, well, this is technical, technical stuff, um, yeah, the constitutional question. Yeah, the bank argued that it was distinguishable from JAFTA um, because mortgagers um, willingly accepted the risk of losing their property. So in JAFTA, they sold their property for debts they owed to other people. It wasn't to, to based on the bank bond. So the bank said that look, if you take out a bond, you take the risk of uh, losing your property in execution. The court rejects, rejected that argument. While it was so that a, a mortgager, a person who takes out a bond, willingly provided his or her immovable property as security for the loan, so that's accepted, and thereby by accepts that the property might be executed upon in order to obtain satisfaction of the debt, in order to pay off the debt, that willingness did not imply, the court found, A, an acceptance that the mortgage debt could be enforced without court sanction. So in other words, that the court had to actually decide that this was okay in these circumstances. 
B, it didn't waive the right to have access to adequate housing or the right not to be evicted except by court sanction under Section 26.1 of the Constitution. So it hadn't waived its right to housing, the, the bond person, the person that took out a bond. And C, the more it hadn't waived the right, he hadn't waived the right, she hadn't waived the right, that the mortgage was in, mortgagee was entitled to enforce performance in the form of execution, even when that enforcement was done in bad faith. So in other words, the bank couldn't just say, well, you've contracted to take out a bond, therefore in terms of the contract, we can do whatever we like, uh, even if we're in bad faith. They still had to act in good faith. Um, Self-help is inimical to the rule of law. You can't take the law into your own hands. And execution upon property in respect of a mortgage debt without court sanction was not permitted. An agreement to put one's property at risk of security in a mortgage bond did not equate to a license for the bank to enforce execution in bad faith. So this is important stuff. I mean, banks have been executing in bad faith for centuries. And here the Constitutional Court is saying, sorry, you can't do that anymore. Accordingly, the finding in two other cases, um, Standard Bank versus Saunderson and Ned Bank versus Mortensen, uh, failed to be overturned to the extent that they found that the registrar was constitutionally competent to make execution orders when granting default judgments. Um, so these judgments were overturned by the Constitutional Court. However, the practical suggestion made in both of those cases to ensure that defendants were alerted to the possibility of the impact the judgment might have on their fundamental rights were practical directions that may assist the court were evaluating whether to grant execution orders. So some parts of these cases were correct, but we don't really need to go into that. Okay, so that is a summary of what happened in Gondwana. Uh, if you uh, wish to know more about this, we'll be talking more about it in future uh, videos. So if, if you could go on YouTube or look at the rest of the videos in your training pack. Thank you very much.